Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Felipe Veloso. Uh, I am from the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile, and I'm going to talk about the effects of outflows, axial outflows emitted by conical wide array sepinches on silicon targets. I'm going to shortly refer to conical wire array sepinches. As most of you might know, Conical wire arrays are uh, composed by a set of fine metallic wires which are located between the cathode and anode of a pulse power generator. The net J cross B force pushes the plasma toward the axis and later it is expelled out in the axial direction as a plasma jet. Most of the experiments so far have concentrated on the study of this jet as a laboratory experiment object which can be used to compare the physics within astrophysically produced jets and laboratory produced jets via dimensionless parameters. Here you can see a self-emission image taken with an MCP camera where the outflow of a dense plasma jet is emitted actually and together with it is a picture of an astronomical object HH47 emitted by a junk star. But most of experiments, as far as we're aware, if not all of them, have measured plasma jets of one to four centimeter long at most. Probably uh, this scale length is limited by the diagnostic techniques in use, which is mostly laser proving and XUB imaging. So our first question was what happened to the plasma after it disappears from our site? Or is there any other axial emission from the conical wire array, just like it happens in plasma focus discharges where energetic ions are emitted in the axial direction. With this in mind, we perform a series of experiments in the Jamputkin pulse power generator, which is located at our university, which is capable of producing 400 kiloamps in 350 nanoseconds. The load of the generator is 16 equally spaced tungsten wires, 25 micron each. In order to detect the actual emission from the conical array without the use of any of the standard techniques such as laser proofing or MCB cameras, we use phalloidy cups as charge collector at a distance of several centimeters away from the top part of the top electrode. These cups are almost collinear with the C-axis of the array, but slightly shifted from it by a few millimeters without the Chapoy interference with them, between them. The targets to radiate, we use 100 oriented silicon wafers in the position where the cups were previously located. At the moment of the experiment, we have no time result diagnostic for the silicons and all the analysis which I'm going to show in this presentation were made a posteriori using standard techniques from the material science areas such as electron microscopy, among some others. So before showing the effects of the outflows on the silicon targets, I will shortly refer to the detection of the particle outflow emitted actually from the conical wire array. Here on the left hand side of the screen, you can see the measurement of particles using Faraday caps at distances much larger than the typical length detected by the dense, for the dense plasma jet usually studied for astrophysical applications. Using these caps, we were able to detect both electrons and fast tungsten ions in the actual direction. After some analysis and for the experiment described in the 2018 reference shown below, we realized that the electrons were produced after the ionization of the remaining background gas within the vacuum chamber by the tungsten ions. Besides this, we measure ion speeds of the order of 10 to the 6 meter per second, indicating a kinetic energy of tungsten ions up to 1 MeV. So the question of what would happen to the silicon targets when these outflows interact with them rapidly came out. In order to compare both outflows, here are some results on the particle detection using Faraday caps together with self-emission images of the plasma taken with MCB camera. As you can see, the timing of both emissions differs substantially. The particle emission has no charge neutrality and it is detected at distances of several centimeters above the electrode. Besi besides that, particles are measured at times when the dense jet can be poorly seen above the electrode. This indicates that each outflow, either particle or dense plasma jet, is independent of each other, opening the possibility of different effects on target 
targets located in the pathway of them. What would we expect from this? Only by studying the thermal diffusion coefficient of silicon and the characteristic time of interaction on the outflows with the target, we can immediately realize that the outflows will only affect the first layers of the silicon with no interaction with the spark. By using a characteristic time of roughly one, nano, one microsecond, we can estimate that the energy transfer to the silicon will reach a penetration depth of, of 10 micrometers at most, so no damage to the bulk will be affected. Nevertheless, using the stream software and the incoming kinetic energy of the tungsten ions previously measured, we can calculate that the projected range of tungsten within the silicon will only reach a few hundreds of nanometers in depth. Once again, this indicates that the effects of the outflows will be constrained to the first layer of the silicon and not its bulk. So, what are those effects in the targets? Here you can see images or taken with an electron microscope for a target located at 10 centimeters above the top electrode. We can easily see two types of structure forming the surface. Firstly, micropores, and secondly, stripe-like, or you may refer to it as wrinkle-like structures uh, distributed in the surface. All of the surfaces are only observed in the target and not in the bulk, which is expected from the penetration depth previously mentioned. All of these observations also indicate a rapid heating and rapid cooling of the surface, which is consistent of a short time scale delivery of the energy uh, produced by the outflows of the conical wire array. Here is a superposition of electron microscope images with EDS analysis, which indicates the amount of tungsten distributed along the surface. The tungsten here in the figures are represented using black dust superimposed to the same images. We can see that the tungsten is evenly distributed over the surface with no preferential zone in every target regardless of the position with respect to the top part of the electron. Uh, here you can see images of, at 11, 14, 17 and 21 centimeters above the top electrode and in all of them we can see an evenly distributed tungsten over the surface. Taking a further analysis of the silicon target located at 21 centimeters above the top electrode, we can see that no micropores are observed in this position and also predominates uh, strip-like structures which can be rarely found, rarely produced in typical material science experiments. Using atomic force microscopy analysis, we can see that the wavelength of these uh, ripples is close to 590 nanometers. And as far as the target is located, these ripples are more uniform and better or oriented. If we compare the structures depending on the relative position to the conical wire arrays, we can see that the presence of micropores decreases the abundance with distance. It variates from 6 to 10 pores per 100 micrometers square at 11 centimeters to almost no pore observed at 21 centimeters. The presence of these micropores is ascribed to surface bowling uh, as a signature of bubble being produced on it. On the other hand, the stripe-like formations indicate fast heating followed by a fast cooling of the surface. In this case, the fast heating is produced by the outflows and the fast cooling is produced by the energy transfer to the bulk of the silicon, which acts as thermal reservoir for the surface. All of these results indicate that the silicon targets located farther from the array receive less energy in comparison to those located closer to the array. This difference cannot be ascribed to either ions or photons since they both reach the targets regardless of its position. This can be ascribed to the loss of energy of the ions due to the ionization of the gap background gas, or it can be ascribed to the dilution and cools down of a dense jet with the distance. So, as a summary, the axial outflows from conical wire array are capable to strongly modify surfaces. So, I like to think that we have found a new application area to conical wire arrays into material science. 
In this regard, we have produced rarely found structures on the silicon surface without the use of any hazard or chemical substance, such as hydrofluoric acid or solvents of any kind. The prevalence of each structure, either micropores or stripes, depends on the relative position of the target with respect to the ray. In the case of micropores, larger energy for boiling are required, so closer position must be chosen. On the other hand, the farther the silicon is, the more uniform and ordered the, stri the stripes are. All of these results indicate that targets located farther from the ray receive less energy than the closer one. This is mostly likely to the relative effect of each outflow on the surface. It means closer targets are affected by both dense plasma jet and ion outflow. The dense jet, the dense jet on the other hand, has poor or no effect at all on the farther targets. Future experiments will include time resolved diagnostic for the silicon surface. Unfortunately, this experiment were interrupted by both social riots in Chile and COVID pandemic afterwards. So we plan to perform them in the near future. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much.